and welcome again to another episode of Nerf News, your number one source for Nerf News on the net. I'm your host, Drac, and today we're leaking more things from the mothership. Why? Because it delights and tickles them so very, very much. However, uh, this is not our leak, this is not proprietary, this is out and about in the interwebs, and it's pretty exciting. So this is the Nerf Ultra 7, proving that Hasbro has no interest in releasing information about the 3 or the 6. However, if you stick around until the end of this video, I'll give you some sneaky peekies on the 3Zs. Now, in the meantime, let's delve into the meat and potatoes. So, what are we looking at here? Well, this is uh, more compact than it would seem, but appears to be a primary size, uh, bolt-action, magazine-fed, rifle pipe blasters. The Ultra 7 is finally giving us a long shot, whereas Instrike kind of began with a really good blaster. It's taken them seven iterations to get to the point where they're delivering anything uh, roughly uh, even resembling a performance-based build or blaster. Now, that's not to say that it's going to be. The Ultra series is massively overhyped and massively underdelivered in every aspect, but uh, at least from a, a checklist perspective, this one looks pretty good. Magazine fed, check. Decent ergonomics, looks like we at least have space around the grip this time, including an open uh, handguard here, as well as a pretty decent sized thumb hole uh, stock in the back. So check. Um, and then theoretically, this is a large amount of draw. Uh, hopefully it's not using a geared system and like a proper bolt. Uh, given that it's so far offset from the barrel here by a, an ordinal that I think would make sense on a gear train, I'm quite certain that this is going to be a really easy, comfortable prime because of the gears, but will drastically limit the uh, overall modification potential of the blaster. Now we appear to have a cheek rest and a scope. Scope looks to be on some sort of in-strike-esque rail, and that's uh, honestly not that bad. Uh, long shot came with a scope, still to date one of the best scopes we've ever had. Looks pretty good. Uh, the only aesthetic gripe that I have about it is that this is too choked up to make sense as like some sort of weird pseudo gas tube that's really a, uh, a sling point attachment. And then up here, we're going pretty clearly for some sort of aggressive Barrett style like muzzle brake on a sniper rifle. Uh, but honey, I shrunk the sniper rifle. You've made the long strike and you've made the Centurion. This looks more compact than either of those blasters at first glance. Uh, I'm sure that if it's longer, we'll get some sort of bombastic claim about the longest ultra blaster ever. Uh, but in its present form, this is a little squished to be a sniper rifle. And it's a little uh, funky in its overall barrel decisions and aesthetic design to be an assault rifle. So somewhere in between, looks like somebody took a sniper rifle and smushed it, but forgot to hold the shift key as they squished it in. That said, overall profile, very sci-fi futuristic, very... Uh, very sci-fi military, very cool in that regard. I think that chopping this off, adding a very different suppressor-esque sort of front end, or maybe even putting a flashlight down here or a foregrip uh, should be very, very cool. This appears to be our magwell and that uh, is exacerbated right here. Again, I think that darts are gonna feed into this barrel. The Springer's plunger tube is gonna be down here and then the prime is offset by a gear uh, system, which we've seen before and is definitely a huge like Thumb at modders, uh, making it more difficult to put massive spring loads in as they now have to come in under the uh, the amount of force it would take to strip out plastic gears. However, uh, this one does not appear to be ambi friendly. Uh, the magazine release is long shot styled, and we have a magazine release, I believe, on both sides. Uh, however, we don't know if the priming bar is going to be on both sides, and uh, based on some speculations from my little sister, it might not be. Uh, on both sides, which would be a little, a little upsetting. However, uh, overall, if this is priced right, i.e. at $40 or less, um, this could be a very good offering. Now, it might be priced higher than the Ultra One, which was a $50 SRP blaster, just because they think that they can get away with it because there's more plastic on here. However, this is a less complicated blaster from a production uh, standpoint and a bill of material standpoint to produce, so I would like to see this coming at $30, $35. We do not have a uh, price point on this one, to my knowledge, quite yet. Uh, however, it looks pretty decent. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if it has a full-size primary style plunger tube on it, that this one could be pretty good if it was priced right. Because, of course, we're going to neck it down. We're going to rebarrel it for 50 cal ammo, which is proper ammo. Uh, I still haven't met a modder who believes in the ultra ammo, although it does perform better out of springers than flywheelers by far. Uh, I still will stick to my guns, so to speak, and say that the Ultra 2 is the only innovative thing to come out of the Ultra line and by far the most exciting from a modder's perspective. But 
if priced right, the Ultra 7 could be pretty cool uh, for necking down, given that the Ultra Ammo is larger uh, than traditional 50 cal darts. That plunger volume could translate to doing very nice things. Now, it'll be tricky to get a sealed breach out of this, but if we ever develop a kit or a thing for this, if there are enough of them produced and they don't get delayed uh, too terribly bad, this could be a pretty cool offering. I'm completely ballparking here, but I would expect this one to show up late summer. Uh, and if not by late summer, it'll be sometime uh, late October, early November, just in time for the holidays. But Ultra 7 doesn't look bad. Now, I promised you guys, and please, by all means, weigh in in the, the comment section down below. I would love, love, love to know what would you pay for the Ultra 7. Keeping in mind that it's a virtually useless ammo type uh, from a, a tinkering kind of perspective and potential, like, what would you be willing to drop on this? I'd be willing to spend up to $40 to pick one up. Uh, just because I think that, like, if this is the, the next coming of the long shot, uh, that is a very beloved platform, and, and full-size Springer blasters like that are super duper cool. Um, but to bring the video home, I promised you guys that I would give you a uh, speculation. It's not a speculation. I know exactly what the uh, Ultra 3 looks like. Um, I just don't have uh, my little sister's artistic abilities to show you an artist rendering. Maybe we'll do that in a separate video. I tell you what, we will do that in a separate video if you get this video to, uh, to 2,000 likes. So share it with your friends, throw me a like. Uh, if you're watching it tonight, uh, the 3rd of April, um, I'm actually butchering a tenderloin over on my Twitch because uh, quarantine is driving me crazy and it's something that I can do to hang out with you guys while I'm doing otherwise mundane kitchen chores. Um, so I'd love to hang out with you guys there. Uh, other than that, um, we got some mod streams coming up in the future. We've been doing some really cool stuff over at Next Level Nerf, but uh, the Ultra 3 is effectively the Ultra Shotgun, not to say that it is actually a shotgun, but it's a uh, very rough cut-esque in its design, appears to be using a magazine in the front, and is a pump-action springer. So uh, if that's your jam, we'll share a little more information about that as we, uh, we get closer and further along, but 2,000 likes, guys, and then at some point we'll get to take a look at the Ultra 3, the greatest mystery in Ultra so far. Ooh. Thanks for watching. Much love, Nerf on Drag out.